Um, my talk today is called Software Sustainability as Collective Action, Building Community Power and Situating Community Outputs and Local Contexts. Um, I may not have time to answer any questions live today, but I'll definitely hop over to Slack and discuss after the talk. And you are welcome to tweet anything that I say today in this talk. Um, so speaking of situating ourselves, uh, I'll start with myself. My name is Jess. I'm standing in for Jessica Meyerson today who couldn't make it, but co-developed this talk with me. Um, I'm speaking today from where I live on the unceded lands of the Pawtucket peoples of the Northeastern United States, commonly referred to today as Eastern Massachusetts. Um, I use she, her pronouns and my academic background is in digital preservation and the field of information science. For 10 years before joining the Educopia Institute, I worked as a practitioner in archives and special collections. Um, I'm also an organizer in my local community and um, I have a lot of experience building power and taking collective action in my personal life. And then I brought these experiences and knowledge to my community work at Educopia, where I am the community facilitator for both the Software Preservation Network and the Big Curator Consortium. And I'll be sharing a boatload of links in the Slack chat on the general channel as I go through this talk, so please check there. Um, as a framing, sustainability does tremendous work for the international community of stakeholders that care about software as both a dependency to make meaning from existing data and scholarship, and also as an output in its own right as a cultural heritage object. It does this work because sustainability doesn't just imply the maintenance of software over the longer term. Sustainability is a way of thinking that begs us to see our relationship to software in multiple dimensions, social, environmental, and economic as well as across time. In the communities that I facilitate, sustainability uh, frames not just how we preserve software and born digital records, but also how these goals can align with those of environmental sustainability and how to sustain our own selves as humans with limited attention and capacity, but a desire to relieve the tensions and, and very big barriers to software preservation. Drawing from information science, software sustainability practitioners operate uh, within a records continuum. I'm gonna share a link to this uh, scholarly article on the records continuum model. Um, the records continuum model, which I'll refer to as RCM, holds both software's active life, fulfilling its originally intended purpose, as well as its potentially long tail of reuse um, by resisting the false binary of active and archival in the first place. The continuum assumes that from the moment of creation, a record, in this case software, is both active and a historic record. Like sustainability, the records continuum model begs us to approach software as part of a larger cultural, environmental, political, and legal processes. And I'll share an example of how we've um, done some of that in SPIN. Um, additionally and importantly, the RCM asks us to consider our relationship to software at different scales of human life, including individual, group, community, organizational, institutional, national, and international scales. So how does the growing um, landscape of software sustainability specializations, tooling, and processes apply across the software continuum? How do we use the continuum model to inform software sustainability activities at each scale of human life? And what are the tensions shaping software sustainability activities at the organizational and international scale? We've done a lot of work around this at Educopia. We have a lot more work to do for sure. And up top, um, we've identified some tensions uh, in the software and software sustainability for cultural heritage. The first tension I wanna talk about is capacity. So it's not enough to know what we're losing or gaining by taking collective action or not taking collective action. Our local constituents and our local stewardship capacity shapes the nature of our commitment to software sustainability. If very few institutions, for example, um, to kind of make this concrete, if very in few institutions have the capacity, both human and financial resources to engage in collective software sustainability, of course, this shapes the boundaries and possibilities of collective action. The next tension I wanna talk about is the squeeze. So practitioners are squeezed, at least in the US, I'm speaking from a US perspective largely here, even though both of the communities I facilitate are international, the um, majority of members are from the US. Um, practitioners are squeezed in the middle of collective action. Many want to engage and act collectively, but they're faced with um, decreasing investment in digital curation, much less software curation. Um, like I said, at least in the US, that's what we're seeing here in cultural heritage institutions. 
And then an increasing need to understand and engage designated user communities, um, often with an eye to social justice, which is also kind of a new development in the past few years uh, in the US. And then an increasing complexity and scale of collected and curated materials. And so the third tension I want to talk about is tooling. Um, while to this complexity and scale that we're faced with, and therefore more difficult for any single organization to develop and maintain, they also have to be placed among an increasingly crowded field of tools and services competing for organizational support and within the landscape of existing digital infrastructure maintained within each organization. And both of these challenges are critical when considering how to move from project to service or project to enterprise tool phase, as we have been studying with the emulation as a service infrastructure project, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Um, we see these tensions in action uh, in various Educopia projects, including the BitCurator Consortium's OSS ArcFlow affiliated project, which I'll just uh, share a link to it wrapped in 2020. And really the sustainability of the BitCurator software itself, which is maintained by the consortium, a community, um, it's still facing this challenge of project to enterprise six years after the completion of the BitCurator Mellon grant. Um, and of course, we see these tensions in the Software Preservation Network's Emulation as a Service Infrastructure Project, um, which is ongoing now. In these communities, we believe that collective action is necessary to situate software and other board digital material at the various scales uh, described in the RCM and to address the tensions that we see around achieving that goal. But in our work on emulation as a service infrastructure, we have now begun to map the boundaries of collective action, the boundary between what a consortia or a service or an inter organizational community of practice is in the best position to do versus what really needs to take place locally informed by local user constituencies and institutional realities. Now that SPIN has gathered model software preservation workflows and case studies and model policies, um, and since we've received exemptions to US copyright law, which is huge, um, and the Easy platform is very real. It's wrapping up a pilot with additional cloud-hosted emulation services. Here's the sandbox. We are faced with a new and very different challenge. How do we resituate these collective outputs back into the very local, very specific context of cultural heritage institutions in ways that enable those same institutions to provide useful and sustainable emulation services? This is where field level scale is de-emphasized and the local inter interrelational scales come to the forefront. Participatory archival research and development, or um, PARD, um, is an orientation or approach to cultural heritage work that speaks to how these communities work and it emphasizes there are more general ways and specific strategies and standards that help cultivate trust um, today like community archiving post custodial stewardship trusted repository audit certification <clears throat> but we sustain trust through reflexive practice by making reflexivity business as usual, questioning our assumptions and our rationales and critical evaluation of documenting those rationales and making that documentation visible, which is a big part of the work that this uh, workshop is doing. Um, so collective action got us to where we are with the development of these resources and the development of communities like the Software Preservation Network and the BitCurator Consortium. But when we refocus on the local context, that is the work of building power for future collective actions. Sustaining and preserving the world software requires the commitment of many, many individuals that hold various levels of influence and power. We build power by building trust. Um, and it's not a very technical activity, it's actually quite simple. From the constant activity of checking in, chatting with your colleagues, understanding where everybody is coming from, you build trust and you collect the ingredients required for successful collective action later. I see power built through sharing knowledge in spaces like this, through training efforts and in sharing resources that can be reused. We must imagine the funding capacity and even knowledge that we want ourselves and our organizations to have in the future in order to develop pathways to materialize these goals. So we imagine this future and we are all collectively working to get there in small ways by sharing knowledge and enthusiasm with our colleagues and in big ways by holding public events like this one um, to amplify that activity many times over. 
I know that the small localized approach of simply talking to people about the issues you're informed about and seeing what blooms really works. And my local community, I have seen incredible transformations in the past five years built through simply having one-on-one -on -one conversations with my neighbors, helping them realize their power, helping them realize what's at stake and helping them take small actions that uh, add up to really big um, results. And we've seen it over and over in these professional communities as well. Um, here's one more link that I just wanted to share of a project seeded from a very small conversation, the BitCurator Consortium's Python study groups. <clears throat> So I'm more committed to the power and necessity of collection action, collective action now than ever before, even as we start to see the boundaries of it. Um, I just want to end with a couple of pleas. First, talk to your colleagues about the software about software sustainability today and every day into the future. Share your knowledge um, and make it everyone's issue. So here's a talking point that you can start with. Software mediates almost every interaction of our daily life at this point, and it isn't likely to change soon. So it really is everyone's concern. Second, seek out collectively developed resources and tools to re reuse in your own context, and let the creators of those resources know that they can be how they can be improved or how you use the resource itself. Um, both of these activities uh, will build our collective power to sustain software. Every conversation, every moment of advocacy adds up. And one day we will all wake up and realize that we're almost there. All of the steps, all of the knowledge sharing, all of the feedback, engagement and community infrastructure building has built a pathway for us. Um, thank you to the workshop organizers for providing the space to build power for collective software sustainability. And thank you all for engaging and building power during this workshop. <laughs>